Today I want to talk about CSS and centering everything and anything. So I have a whole bunch of examples of elements with display block, display inline, inline block, using flex, using grid, and I'm going to talk about how you can center stuff in all of those cases. So the first, I've got uh, three sections here. That's the three purple areas. First one has three paragraphs. I've got two paragraphs that have a large amount of text and then one with a small amount of text. And by small, I mean it doesn't fill the entire line. Then I have two spans, one set to display inline, which is the default, one set to inline block. Second section, I have four paragraphs, two of them with large amounts of text, two of them with small, and then the same thing for the grid. All right, let's look at the first one. Let's talk about basic display block, inline, inline block, and how we can center those things. All right, so the class one right here. So I'm going to just hide a couple of default things that we don't need to worry about. One, two, and three, those are the class names for these three sections. One, two, and three. I'm just setting background, border, width, and I've got margin of one REM everywhere. So the width is 80% of the screen. My one REM margin shows up on the top, on the left, and on the bottom. Over here on the right hand side, I have a one REM margin as well. So that's right about here. There's all this remaining space. Now a section is display block, so it's maintaining this space over here. It's not letting anything come up here, but the display stops here. If I want to center this whole thing, and I can do this for all of them, I just need to come in here and say that on the left and right, instead of an actual number, I'm going to use auto. Now I can do that on any of these. We can change the margin on number two to do the same thing, and that's the flex display, and on number three we can do the same thing, adding auto for the left and right. What that does is it takes any block element the whole block itself and it centers it. The margin on the left and right, whatever amount of margin there is, that's going to be evenly divided between the two sides. That's what margin auto does. So we have these three paragraphs and, and two spans and these four paragraphs and these four paragraphs. None of those are being affected by this. The margin is on the outside of the content box. So we're just saying any leftover space, and if I were to expand this, you can see that it's going to grow and shrink as I change the size of the screen because I'm using a percentage for the width. But the margin on the left and right will always be evenly divided. And that's because we're talking about having something that automatically balances itself on a block element. So display block with margin auto. That's the key for these three sections. Now inside of here, we've got these three paragraphs. So let's take a look at the CSS for those. All right, I've got one for the first paragraph, one for the third paragraph here. This is the first of type and the last of type. If I were to do the margin trick here, so margin zero and auto, no change gets made. And I'll come down, I'll do it to the last one as well. No change gets made. So this one's not affected, and this one not affected. The reason, and I'm going to turn off the auto uh, refresh here so that it stops jumping around. So here's the CSS that I'm talking about. So the margin, top and bottom zero, left and right auto, so f equally balancing that space, the remaining space, that's what auto does. Well. A paragraph is display block, which means it fills 100% of whatever width is available. So there is no remaining space, so there's no centering that takes place. So this line is actually doing nothing. And the same thing with the other one. So these are doing absolutely nothing for us because we're already using all of the available space. Now this last one here. It didn't move, but I can still center this. And the reason I can center it is I can use text align center. 
And if I do that, there we go. This is now centered inside of the paragraph. So the paragraph still takes up the whole space, but inside the paragraph, that's where we're centering is inside the block. That's what text align will do. Now my spans, I've taken both spans, the inline and inline block, both of them, and I've already put these properties on here. I've tried this way, I've tried this way. It doesn't do anything. And that is because margin auto left and right, the margin cannot be set to auto when you have something that is display inline or inline block. It's only if something is display block. So if I change this inline to display block, nothing changes yet because the width is still the whole thing. If we come down and we make the width Let's say 50%. There we go. Now this is taking up 50% and the remaining space is evenly divided. When this thing is 100%, which is its default, there we go. Now this centering right here is from the text align center. Okay, let's go back to inline and get rid of this width. Refresh. I'm back to here. My text align center is centering it, but the only space available is wrapped tightly around here. So inside of this blue area right here, I am centered. Same thing with this one, the inline block. Inside of that amount of space, it is centered. Or I can do text align left or right or center. It's not going to make any difference. Within that space, it is aligned that way. And because inline and inline block don't like to do the margin across the whole space, that's why we can't do that balancing. Float's not even worth talking about because float is just about moving something to the left or the right. There is no center float. Okay, so that's the basic ones. That's display block, inline, inline block, margin auto, and the text align center. So we've got all those things that we can work with. Now let's take a look at centering with flex. Okay, moving down to the second area, we have the border width margin, same as the ones above it, display flex. Okay, now I have four paragraphs in here. You'll notice that they are stretched across. That is the default for display flex. The bottom one, I've got almost the exact same content, just wrote the word grid down here, but by default, it makes a column. I haven't defined any columns here, so I get one. Here, I haven't said anything about how it wraps, so by default, my flex wrap property is set to no wrap. That means it's going to try to force everything to be in this one row. If we turn this on and say, you know what, it's okay, you're allowed to wrap. This is what happens. The first element all this big long piece of text. Well, if I say flex wrap, things automatically become flex basis auto. So it's like we did this, flex basis auto. That's the default value. What this is going to do is say, all right, let's look at the first element. How much width does it need? Well, it keeps going and going and going, reaches the end, comes to the next line, going, 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 okay, stop. Well, how much room did it need? It needed the entire width. Fine, okay, we'll do that. Next one, width auto, how big is it? Well, it's only this big. Okay, next one, how much space does it need? Well, it needs the whole thing. All right, well, it can't fit beside this one because it needs the whole thing, and we are allowed to wrap because flex wrap was set to wrap, so it jumps to the next line, and then the remaining one goes down here. So that's what's happening by default here. With flex wrap turned on, if I change the basis to 50%, there we go. Now, each one of the four is going to take up 50% of the available space. With flex wrap turned on, 50%. 
no wrap, this is what's going to happen. So we want wrap so it comes down to the next line. There we go. 50%, 50%, 50%, 50%. All four of them are getting that. Now if I want to center things, we have two properties at the top level. This is for the container, not the items themselves, not the four items, but the container, this whole section, the whole purple area. We can say justify content. Now with flex, we have justify, con justify and align these two things. Justify is whatever the direction is. So by default, flex is going in the direction row. I can come in and say I want flex direction row by default. This is what I want. This is the default value. So that's what we're getting already. Justify is the alignment that follows the row. So if I'm going to align it along the row, how do I want to do it? Do I want to center it along the row? Do I want to align it towards the end of the row, the beginning of the row? This isn't going to make any difference if wrap is turned on because it's going to go to the next line. They're each going to take that 50% and keep filling up that space. But we can say if we want to use space around, space between, this can make some changes sometimes if there's leftover space. But we're not going to see much of anything happening along the axis because we're filling up all that space. Now, the other direction. So align items. This is cross axis. So our direction is row. Align will be in the column direction vertically. Well, this one's taking all the vertical space. This one's taking all the vertical space because they're, they're forcing it to be open this much, forcing it to be open this much. So these two are not going to be affected, but these ones, they don't have enough content to fill all this area. We need, we can explain how we want this to work. So if I say center, vertically centered inside this row, vertically centered inside this row, we have some centering taking place, but vertically, vertically along the column. So the column direction right here like that. Now within here, if I want to center these things, we can use the text align because we're talking about inside the box. So inside this box, inside this box, inside this box, inside this box, not like margin that goes outside. There we are. So this is centered in the space, centered in that space, centered in that space, centered in that space. Justify content. We're talking about taking the block and moving it where there's extra space. Here we forced it to be 50% instead of auto. So because of that, we're filling it all up. Now, if we reduce this, let's say 30% each, or let's make it 40 so it doesn't fit three on a row. There we go. Here is my justify content center. See how they're both pushed in towards the center? If we change this to flex start, we're talking about the beginning of the rows. Flex end, that's the end of the row. Space around gives us one space in the middle, and then a half space here, and a half space here. One space in the middle, half a space, half a space. Space evenly gives us one space, takes all the remaining space, and divides it evenly between here, here, and here. All right, so that's vertically and horizontally. We don't get a vertically centering when we're dealing with just display block inline and inline block, but we do with flex. We get the centering in two directions. All right, last one, display grid. By default, grids are column, unlike the flex, which is by default row. Again, we can start to say how big a space we want each one of these to take. And it's automatically trying to fill up two dimensions, not just the one row or one column. If we come in here and we say grid 
template columns and I say one free space unit okay takes up the whole thing oops refresh that there we go takes up the whole thing if we add another column so there's two free space units that's how we get to the same thing as we are doing here now the justify and align properties with flexbox depends on your flex direction if you're talking about row first or column first justify is along this align is perpendicular to whatever this is in grid justify is always along the rows align is always along the columns so our justify content again we're taking up all the space so there's not going to be a lot of effect going on here you can see it doesn't really matter what we do flex start center it's not going to have any real effect on us so let's just leave it at flex start the align however align items if we center them there we go again we're vertically centered inside here we're vertically centered inside here if we want to take up the entire height here instead of center we can say stretch there we go so now it's taking up the whole width and the text is just starting at the top and it's going to flow down to the bottom the more text there is the more of this it'll fill but if we want it centered this is what's going to happen the height is going to be just the height of the content but it will be centered inside of this space and just like the flex if we want the text to be horizontally centered in this space we're going to do the same thing that we did up here text align center that will fill in the last piece of the puzzle and now we've got vertical and horizontal centering and that's how to center everything and anything in CSS so I hope you found that useful I will leave all this code as a code gist for you to download I'll leave that in the comments uh, if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below if you found this useful please share it and as always Thanks for watching.